Welcome to Popcorn Movie Review News, where we take a look at all the top Netflix stories from the previous week. So right off the top, I want to talk about LeBron James, the NBA, and Netflix. They're in the early stages of developing a, a series similar to what we saw with the quarterbacks earlier this last year. This appears to be something that Peyton Manning is involved with as well, and has been trying to get quite a few different quarterbacks involved with in terms of making a second season for that. Uh, but at least as of now, I guess they've had some trouble locking some players down. Uh, but in terms of the NBA, there are a couple people in mind, some players that have been attached to this project. The Kings, DeMontis, Sabonis, the Miami Heat's Jimmy Butler, the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, as well as the Minnesota Timberwolves, Anthony Edwards. Personally, I would be on board for a show like this. I know for me, it'd be something I'd be very interested in. I've been very deep into the NBA this year, be able to see kind of how those players have maybe handled themselves throughout the season or going into the all-star break and into the playoffs, whatever it might be, or even honestly, just the off season and, and projecting into the 2024, 2025 year. I know I would enjoy being able to kind of watch their process, how they train, how they develop their diets all of that kind of stuff i think that's something that i i would find very interesting and i know the nba population would as well when you look at the quarterback show from i think uh, august or july of 2023 i think that's a show that did very well for the platform um, and i'm sure again one that they hope have high expectations moving forward and being able to kind of grow that brand and grow that series especially with it being attached to somebody like peyton manning i hope this is really just kind of the beginning of what this series could look like. You know, I think that opens up potential outlets for sports and leagues like the NHL or MLS or maybe even some of those European soccer leagues. There's lots of opportunities for this series to grow and really uh, mature into something that sports fans will love. From there, I want to talk about gaming in 2023 on the Netflix platform. Apparently, this is something that has grown almost 200% over uh, from year to year since its introduction. I um, mean, it was definitely made that much stronger with the release of all the Grand Theft Autos on the platform. They say that that accounted for roughly 17, 18% of total downloads this last year for Netflix. And for me, I'm actually really interested by this. It's something that they are looking to invest fairly heavily in. Um, being able to see that type of success, I think is something that, you know, they will lean into that much more. And it, on top of kind of just the general growth from year to year, um, I guess they are on the path to maybe even making their own game developer. Um, this is something that, again, there seems to be a certain level of passion for where the company feels that on top of being able to show high quality shows and high quality films, they know that people are living in their phone these days and that mobile gaming is very much at the front of that as well. And I think one thing Netflix is doing a really good job on is using their properties from the platform and then transitioning them into games with franchises like Narcos, Love is Blind, Too Hot to Handle, Queen's Gambit, I think being able to show them in a different way, a different platform, um, is another way to kind of get eyes on these shows, get eyes on these films, and be able to, again, just kind of leverage them that much more. I and mean, I wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this moving forward as well. Again, especially if this is something that they see a future in, see a profit in. Um, we'll see a lot more Netflix, I think, exclusives and Netflix original games here in the future. And then even just more additions like the GTA franchise, getting those San Andreas and, and the originals. I wouldn't be surprised if we get more of that as well. I know personally, I've dabbled in it a little bit. I think for me, the game I played the most was the TMNT Shredder Revenge. Um, it was nice to admit to be able to kind of sit back and take out my phone and play that. Mobile or even pulling out my tablet, I played it a little bit on there as well. But for the most part, I would say I don't really dabble too much into the games as of yet but I would love to hear from you are there specific games within the Netflix catalog that you really enjoy or that you've had a lot of fun with or somewhere you'd like to see um, them take this particular portion of the platform love to read all about that in the comments below then finally I wanted to touch on probably the biggest announcement of the week um, and this being the new show on the platform coming in March, Three Body Problem. And they were able to announce this in a very unique way. CES, of all things, really wanting to immer immerse some of the people who were there for the event kind of in this show, give them a very unique experience to see what is going to be on the table moving forward. Obviously, getting the guys who help spearhead Game of Thrones for HBO is a big win for Netflix as well. To have them on this show, I think, is a big deal. And I know, personally, I'm excited to see where this kind of goes moving forward. There are gonna be big expectations for this franchise. For anyone who doesn't know, it's based on a very popular science fiction series 
um, a very beloved franchise as well. So I know I'm excited. Again, I think the way that they were able to introduce this, especially at a platform like CES was very unique. Um, and hopefully we'll just drive up the anticipation for this that much more. Then finally, I wanted to touch on some of the trailer drops from Netflix over this last week. There have been quite a few that I'm excited for, and I'm happy that we won't have to wait too long for many of them as well. First being NASCAR Full Speed, which I think a lot of people will tell you is a show. It's very much trying to compete with something like uh, Drive to Survive, the F1 show on Netflix. If this is half as popular as that, I think that they would consider that a success. Coming February 2nd is Orion in the Dark, a new anime animated film from Netflix. This looks adorable. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, especially for families um, and honestly, even just goofy people like me. February 9th, we have Love Stalker Killer, which is a documentary about a gentleman who got involved in the dating scene and how it went poorly in the most absurd and craziest kind of way. Something I think could be interesting for maybe all the scary reasons uh, you might want to avoid online dating. Next on the February 14th, we have Players, which is looks like a comedy which will star Damian Waynes Jr., Liza Kashi, and Gina Rodriguez. I'm very excited for this. I think having a core cast like that and then bringing in somebody like Tom Mellis as well, who's best known for his work on Lucifer. This is a great cast. This should be a lot of fun and an enjoyable comedy for for sure. Then wrapping things out on February 24th, uh, they have the 30th annual Screen Actor Guild Awards, which they'll be streaming live. Um, it should be interesting to see how they produce this, what this looks like, what this feels like, how this matches up to other shows like the Golden Globes, and then obviously the Oscars as well. I'm looking forward to checking this out and seeing how it stacks up. But tell me down in the comments below, what are some of these trailers that caught your attention, that you're excited for? Are you excited for the three body problem? Again, do you use the Netflix platform for gaming? I'd love to read all about that in the comments below. But until next time, have a great time curling up on the couch and enjoying a good show.